Losing any win hurts. But when it could have been your first Grand Prix victory, it's just that little bit worse. As a last-minute stand-in for an injured Michael Schumacher, Mika Salo led the 1999 German Grand Prix, his second race for Ferrari. Salo leads the German Grand Prix, pursued by uh, Irvine and Frentzen, and Hackenham will appear from the left-hand side of your screen any moment now no. as he comes out of the pit line. Despite his fantastic driving, the team decided to give the win to their regular driver, Eddie Irvine, with a team order call for Salo to move over. Irvine said afterwards that Salo won the race, even giving him the first place trophy, as he went on to become runner-up in the Drivers' Championship, missing out by just two points. What a star today, like, you know, it's his race, he's getting the trophy. I, I'd feel bad if it was sitting on my mantelpiece. Um, he did a fantastic job, I have to say, absolutely, boy wonder, um, incredible. Fresh face Kimi Raikkonen had led the 2002 French Grand Prix for McLaren with a mature drive beyond his years. But fluid on track saw him run wide just five laps from home and allow Michael Schumacher through to claim the win and his fifth world championship. Very deep, very, Too very much. deep. Has he? He has. He's lost it. Oh, oh Kimi, Michael what have you... says, have a bit of that. It was just my mistake that we lost the race. Uh, maybe I'm most disappointed race in my life but uh, that's the way how it goes and uh, next time I hope so we can win. Racing at Imola and in only his second race for Ferrari, Sweden's Stefan Johansson climbed from 15th on the grid to lead the 1985 San Marino Grand Prix as his rivals fell away. But an electronic issue saw his fuel meter give a false reading and he heartbreakingly ran out of juice on the final lap. And, that, and that's Johansson. Johansson's in trouble now. Johansson in probably is your job. And Frost has now gone into the lead. What an incredible finish to the San Marino Grand Prix. Jacques Villeneuve took pole and nearly his first win on his F1 debut. The Canadian was the reigning IndyCar champion of 1995 and took no time at all to settle into Formula One. Go! The gloves are off, team, their teammates are great mates, and off goes Villeneuve, and he gets on the course back in front of Hill, and he manages to block his teammate, because that was Damon's opportunity, he wasn't able to take it, but now Hill can push very hard indeed, and he's trying to take him on the outside, what a sensational scrap. But despite his rookie heroics, an oil leak in the final laps saw him slow and cede the lead to Damon Hill to deny him a fairy tale debut result. Slows! Is he going to ignore it? Is he going to be a good team man and obey it? And if he does, Damon Hill will go through and win. At the moment, he is ignoring it. Certainly has done so far. Now, this is the crucial bit. No, he lets him through. Surely, yes. Jack Villeneuve lets Damon Hill through. He concedes the lead. Bitter goal for Jack Villeneuve. Well, for sure, it's disappointing. Uh, to lead most of the race and then having to slow down, but uh, the whole race itself was fun. It was a great battle with, uh, with Damon, and uh, for sure today was a good demonstration of the Williams Renault and its uh, very strong package. Mika Hakkinen took his first Formula One pole position at the Nurburgring in 1997, starting from the front of the Luxembourg Grand Prix on his 29th birthday. Mika Hakkinen leads and look at Coulthard on the left. Is he coming through into second position? Indeed he is, I think, as he goes through on the inside. The Finn built up a big lead and was looking set to win, but his celebrations were cut short when his Mercedes engine blew up on lap 43, ending his race. And in this sensational race, Mika Hakkinen has retired. Mika, all our thoughts go with you. It was terrible luck. You had that race in the back. It was definitely under control all the time. It's not easy to take it, but you get nothing free, you know? The 1971 Italian Grand Prix was one of the fastest F1 races ever, as well as one of the closest finishes, led by Chris Amon's roaring Matra. 
His win looked safe until a helmet mishap mid-race tore his entire visor off with just 10 laps to go and left him without any eye protection. It came down to F1's closest ever finish, with the top five covered by just six tenths of a second, while Eamon limped home to sixth place, 30 seconds down the road. Standing in for Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes in a car he barely fitted into, George Russell started the 2020 Sakir Grand Prix on the front row alongside teammate Valtteri Bottas. It's lights out and away we go, Russell does get away well. And after a perfect start, Russell held the lead, looking set to take his first ever F1 points with a victory, until a pit stop bungle by Mercedes saw a safety stop turn into a nightmare, with Russell fitted with an illegal mixed set of tyre compounds. OK, George, we're going to need to box box. We have a mixed tyre set on the car. Despite the setback, Russell could have taken back the lead, overtaking teammate Bottas as he went on a thrilling charge. Wow, this is just brilliant. How How's that for your first race for Mercedes-Benz? Until a puncture forced him back to the pits and Russell ended up salvaging just a few points. So a box box, this is genuine puncture, so box box. Oh. Oh, I don't know what to say. No, sharing, sharing your feelings there, mate. Let's just get your head down. George Russell then does get his first points finish in what is his 37th career start and has led more laps this season than anyone other than Hamilton or Bottas, but he knows that could have been a win tonight for him. Patrick Depailler had stood on an F1 podium eight times before the 1978 South African Grand Prix but never on the top step. The stage was set as he led for Tyrrell with 15 laps to go, but a fuel feed problem at the very end of the race let Ronnie Peterson catch him, and despite a valiant last lap battle, he was defeated by just four tenths of a second. Fortune would smile on Depailler though, as he claimed his first win in Monte Carlo two races later. Charles Leclerc, in just his second race for Ferrari, was on the brink of becoming a new Tifosi hero. He took pole in Bahrain ahead of teammate Sebastian Vettel and left him battling Lewis Hamilton in the race, while the Monegasque driver sailed off serenely into the distance. But a cylinder misfire saw Leclerc fall back behind both Mercedes, leaving him helpless in the final stages of the race. There's some pictures with the engine. What's happening? So Lewis Hamilton, down towards the final corner, takes the lead of the Bahrain Grand Prix. And only a timely safety car allowing him to salvage his first F1 podium finish. Part of motorsport. Unfortunately, today it was not our day. Very hard one to take, but thanks to the team for the amazing car all weekend long, and I'm pretty sure we'll come back stronger. Despite five podium finishes in his first full season of Formula One, Damon Hill was firmly in the shadow of his world champion teammate, Alain Prost. But halfway through the season, he began to get to grips with the Williams and beat Prost off the line at Hockenheim to lead most of the 1993 German Grand Prix. It seemed as though victory would be his when after Prost retook the lead, he was given a stop-go penalty letting Hill keep first place and stood set to become the first son of a world champion to win a Formula One Grand Prix. But on the penultimate lap, disaster struck. I cannot believe it! It's a tyre, it's the left rear tyre of Damon Hill and for the second race in succession, oh. Damon Hill has had appalling luck. Yet again, fate has snatched victory from the hands of Damon Hill. Heartbreak for Hill, who was classified 15th, while Prost took what would be his 51st and final Grand Prix win.